Wash for Hype project seeks to use the improvement in the hygiene, water and sanitation conditions in the communities to improve health. Wash for Health was designed to follow six components. Water, sanitation being the main one, uh, SBC, social behavior change, PPP, which is a public-private partnership, governance, and the last one was public institutions. So the first component is to improve usage of household latrines. And then we did it through CLTS, that community-led total sanitation. At first, we didn't have uh, latrines. So when they came, we draw uh, the map of the community. So you can see these houses, there was no latrines. So this is a physis, physis, physis. So all the community houses were full of physis. By then, we realized that, no, we were defecating around. Then they advised our what to do. And then we moved to what, uh, dig and bury. By then there were no latrines. Because of the open defecation, there were a lot of chorella and typhoid in the system. When we do the screening for food vendors, the chorella and typhoid was a bit high during those days. The records at the time did indicate that only one out of five households in Ghana had access to an improved um, latrine. Almost 22% of the population were practicing open defecation. The communities were quite dirty. People were practicing open defecation, uh, no practice of hand washing in most of the communities. Most of the partners were putting so much pressure on the community people to find a way of uh, building their own toilets. And year after year, these toilets will collapse and they will come back to build. So you were counting and discounting along the line. So the issue of access was not sustainable. Then when Global Community came into the district, we implemented WASH, which is a household latrine construction. And the people bought into the idea where more than 85% of the households have and use household latrines. And they also tidy up their environment with hand washing facilities. We develop what we call the Dignilu. The Dignilu is a plastic latrine that comes with some innovations to target the pro poor on each community. We've helped households to construct their own toilet facilities, which have helped about 50 communities in Adan West District to attain ODF status. When they came in, they taught us how to do cleaning and then how to maintain our animals so that they will not be fusing all over the uh, compound. I feel that I and for the first time in the history of Northeast, we have two communities 
that are sanitized, which is the highest level in the, OD, in the CLTS spectrum. Whatever they are going to do here is going to benefit they themselves. They were attending their regular meetings together, any meeting they call to see the whole community will come. Then they were also following the action plans they have for themselves. Regular cleanup exercise, coming together to dig their peace, supporting in the construction of the latrines and all the things they put on the plan, they were able to follow the plan religiously. We have worked to improve the sanitation conditions in over 400 communities in the northern zone alone. And we have over 330 communities that have been supported to attain the open defecation status. That is, open defecation has uh, stopped in those communities and the hygiene and sanitation conditions have also improved in those communities. We have more than 4,000 Dignidus installed across the country, which is a great achievement. If we look forward to the achieving the, the, the SDGs in, by 2030. The second component is the improved water supply for communities. We have been drilling boreholes, we have rehabilitating boreholes, and more importantly, we have been constructing uh, small water systems, which can benefit from 3,000 to 8,000 people. The water that they gave us is nice, but if you are drinking it, we will feel comfortable. We have been baby, friend, baby, baby, no mama eh stand pipes wo krum no ma twetwe bi ama ma fo ofie wo a wo pen den 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 that is see ah na ya twa ma ofie we are looking at the distances where the woman travel to go and search for water where something has to go to the stream and search for water or travel to dankwa which is about 8 kilometers away from here it was really very difficult to come by water we were depending on uh, water from the streams, rocks, and others. Say, I'm going to be a bear, you know. You should have been rest until you're here. And soon, it's time to be a bear. You're going 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 to be a bear. You're we drew boreholes for them. Some of them had access to potable water for the first time. And then the small town, we have done about five of them under the project. And first time we have brought in innovation where the main power source is the solar. And then we are using the grid as backup. We have been extending uh, and linkaging uh, multiple communities. Uh, in some cases extending to institutional places like uh, the police, like schools, health uh, uh, clinics. In the area of governance, uh, we have helped to strengthen the capacity of the staff of the MMDAs that we are working in, particularly environmental health units of the MMDAs. Uh, the capacity of uh, chef coordinators, and even at the school level, what we call the school-based health coordinators, 
to help them to understand the work in the area that they are doing and also to acquire new skills. Despite the efforts that uh, uh, full staff make in ensuring that people have talent, there's, there's always a group of people who even if you give them 10 years, they will never be able to afford their own toilet. And these are the people we refer to as the poor and the vulnerable. The SDG um, has the implementing partners to ensure that no one is left behind. But if you go to a community and there are people who cannot afford, it means that they are going to be left behind if there is nothing to take care of them. Our pro-poor interventions is basically in the sanitation sector where some poor and vulnerable individuals have been identified and supported with um, one of our innovations, that is the Dignilu. Mene <laughs> Lote happens to be the first community in the district to be declared ODF within a shorter period of time, like about six months. Before then, you could find household attendance in only two communities. And these were basically Sola and then Kalba. But when the partnership started and grew out the program, within the first six months, about 290 communities have become ODF from the 330. You see that. The behavior change component of the project is looking at the essential wash and hygiene behaviors that cast across all the project's major areas in terms of water, sanitation, and hygiene. And these are done through the use of um, the behavior change communication package that was developed by the Manor Group for this project. The booklet has component of them to teach school children how to wash their hands, to teach families how to take care of their latrines and their surroundings, to teach healthcare professionals or healthcare practitioners how to make sure they practice their IPC. You play. If you get this, you will start. So if you play another, you get maybe like four. You can't. If you lie on a black place, they'll give you a paper to answer a question. So if you get it correct, they'll promote you. The game is very interesting. And what we learn from it is to keep uh, ourselves clean and the environment clean. It tells you what open defecation is. How to clean toilets. You can find it in the picture. The way a, a good environment should be, it has been stated in the picture. From what we are seeing, we can see that this is something that will have lasting impact because when you catch young people like the school children at early age, and people, oh, these behaviors, we didn't even know that they exist. But right before us, see, they are easy and simple things that we are doing, but we never realize that they are either good behaviors or they are bad behaviors. But with the game, it helps to let people really identify these behaviors easily and translate them as themselves. When we did the media um, project uh, review, we realized that behavior changed in terms of the adoption. 
to save drinking water change from 26 to 29 percent over a period of nine months within the project which we think is a very good impact as far as the project is concerned so we have also been working extensively in schools with menstrual hygiene management for menstrual hygiene management we're working closely with ghana education service in basic schools um, across again our project regions some of the ladies they don't have money to go and buy pack they will use cloth when you have your menses you cannot come to school we are in the rural area so for my girls when they are in their menstruation period or time at times they find it difficult to come to school just because they will not get the necessary materials to do or to help themselves. One of the key innovations is the supply of um, reusable menstrual hygiene materials, which we get from a partner called Bigel. Um, they are really reusable panties, and I must say they are first um, in the country, with, which comes with special towels as well. Um, these materials or panties can last as long as two years if the girls are able to use them very well. So which means that they don't need to procure or buy menstrual pads every now and then to use. They are very hygienic and then very easy to use as well. Just open it gently. Let me see your big girl panties. Isn't it beautiful? Girls, girls, do we like it? Yes. Okay, so let's say big girl panty. Yes. And I said it's used for what? Only when we are. Yes. Only when we are. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, we need to bring it to the Ghana Standards Authority and Food Drugs Authority for them to uh, give give us an extra approval for us to uh, uh, produce uh, on scale to be able to get to the corners of this country because there are a lot of vulnerable girls who even as a result of not having menstrual materials, even drop out of school. And that's not the best. Uh, we also support them with a simple tool called the Smart Cycle, which we, uh, we teach them to use to calculate their menstrual um, cycle. They have printed some of our menstrual hygiene materials, even for the schools to use. And so it also supports the education on menstrual hygiene. Uh, for us, it's very important to break some of these stigmas that ha have been affecting girls and, and preventing them from attending school. Uh, we have not only work and train girls, but also the boys who have a lot to do with that and the parents as well. Through the PPP, we've been working with the Unilever Foundation, we've worked with uh, Goldfields Foundation, we work with uh, Tuton, and then through that, we work with Duraplast to develop a plastic latrine to help us to improve access to latrines in the communities. Now, I don't know. It's your dear, or be near to Bulebina, a chimney cacaca. A more one, a year mark, won't be in Shumay, a ten fat, nay, you shall not quite be bit as a white elephant. You. Subri is a particular or a peculiar community with water and sanitation issues. So we thought it wise that once we do going to do this project as a pilot, we start with the community with peculiar issues to see whether that project is going to be viable so that in future we can roll it over to other communities. And the idea is that the global community is not only the only one who 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 is not only the only one I have first or second one. Yes, I am a one. I am a third 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 one. I
I'm a young big crowd on some show to touch my ear. You know, or no bay. Yeah, you are more mommy. You know, on some of my once I want sign, you may be no so my We normally want to see to the sustainability of such boreholes. So what we're doing basically here is that to train, you know, personnel from the various communities to make sure that after we exit, they can at least manage their own water systems by themselves. Yeah, so it's more like a technical training we're giving to them to man the various boroughs that we do. Goffields Ghana, through the foundation, has partnered a lot of um, agencies and key stakeholders in trying to bring water and sanitation to the doorsteps of our host communities. Yeah, so, and then with global community, having the vast experience in this area, we thought it wise to partner them in establishing our purpose. The final component is the component six, which entreats us to provide wash infrastructure for schools and then the healthcare facility. Most of the schools were not having toilets. So they were doing open uh, We used to go around the surrounding booths to just do it openly. People used to attend nature school at home. And the worst thing is that when they go home, they don't come back. We had only one toilet for use in the whole school. That is both primary and GHS. Most of the school don't have water on the compound. So as a result, most of them were having problems with health. By the help of USAID and then global communities, we have had two toilets, each room containing five and then four rooms as well, four for boys and then five rooms for girls. That is a modern toilet that even has a changing room for the girls. They continue by giving us uh, water in the school. That is a, uh, a boho. With this facility, we have uh, urinaries there where we can go and free ourselves if we feel like urinating. We also have a poly tank that has been provided with taps where we wash our hands. And in the girls' changing room, there is a tap there where they wash themselves up and also clean themselves and come out. They have also provided us with a Veronica buckets for us to help in the hand washing activity. When we are from the toilet, we wash our hands. When you Pour the soap into your hands, you rub, then your fingers, you rub it into your palm. In between your hands, you wash it with under running water. And then you wash your hands, at the back of your hands, you wash it, and then you clean it with tissue. We have talked about um, personal hygiene. We have looked at how to wash hands, the proper way of washing the hands. It has reduced the human contact with excreta and the two it has reduced poor hygiene management most of the, the children now when you go to their schools they realize that after defecating they need to wash their hands before they eat they wash their hands most of the time when they come out from the classroom and they want to go back to the classroom they wash their hands with soap and the running water so we have five schools that's Adiemra we have Intenteso Domia Bra we have a sick room. They all now have a proper and a good toilet. So the environment is now clean. We provided seven institutional toilets for seven schools in the Andan West districts, and then eight institutional facilities in the Andan East district. And then we selected about 60 communities, which we implemented CLTS activities there. Our cleaner used to go far distance to fetch water, provide for our daily basis. But as the water has been provided here, now it's easy to get water, and which is also hygienic. We have provided close to about uh, 25 institutional uh, toilet facilities to many of health facilities and then the educational institutions. Particularly in the Solatuna Kalba district and the Bole district. We have been working on cholera prevention as well since 2014, 2015, 
when we saw the, the last large outbreak of cholera. Since then, we have been working in hotspots. So we started uh, the quarterly disinfection exercises in Cape Coast. And I could say that it was very successful. There were a lot of also uh, COVID uh, mitigation interventions. What we did was to really intensify playing off a lot of hand washing jingles on radio stations. The people working on the healthcare facilities are trained uh, in, the, in the various uh, forms uh, that they have uh, segregated water for drinking, water for uh, for cleaning, for disinfection, making sure that the waste is being treated properly. In the slum and the bigger cities of Kumasi and uh, Accra, where uh, environmental health officers supported along, the capacity that was um, given to them through this project helped them to even continue burying the dead. We also supported most of the institutions, especially the markets. Um, very public places in communities where we work. We supported them with hand washing facilities. Last year, in this community, following the opening of the Bagre Dam, the whole community was flooded. Uh, the first thing global communities did was uh, to carry out an assessment. So after the assessment, they came with the support of the municipal assembly to disinfect this community to prevent outbreak of cholera. We realized that houses collapsed, farmlands were washed away, the roofs were blocked because they were flooded and communities were cut away. The boreholes we provided in some of the communities were submerged. Uh, some latrines also collapsed. So the first thing we did was to send aqua taps. And aqua tap is water purification tablet that purifies water. So once we're able to send that to the community and for the household to use it, you are rest assured that they would have portable water to consume within these very challenging times. And that will save lives. <laughs> This will help to make the water wholesome and uh, uh, safe for drinking and uh, to improve their health so that to, it will also help to prevent future water and sanitation related diseases like cholera, etc. Again, we also build the capacity of the environmental health officers and then not more officers, how to use the water treatment or water purification tablet, that's the aqua tap, before they went ahead to distribute it to the communities. There are still many places, many uh, regions and districts, communities that uh, don't have access to water or proper sanitation, and those we need to pay attention to those uh, those districts, regions, and communities to make sure that they have access and they have uh, uh, a dignified uh, sanitation.